Second Chances of the Soul by 55 Artist. Chapter 7. The Aftermath. Tony flew down with Peter, landing seconds before him. So after seeing Peter had made it out safely, Tony instructed Natasha to close the portal. Oh my gosh, that was like the coolest thing that has ever happened to me. I can't wait to tell Ned. He's going to be so jealous. Like some aliens started coming at me, but I was so strong in this suit that I, they couldn't even take me. And that's when I saw that nuke. I knew I had to get rid of it because that's literally a nuke. It would kill people, right? So when I thought, where should I put it? And then I saw this great big hole in the sky and I was just like, that's a great place. And then the whole thing went boom. Oh, you should have seen it, Mr. Stark. What the heck? All the aliens are collapsing. Oh, it's like those movies where the mothership gets destroyed and they all fall down. This is amazing! Peter continued to ramble on, clearly unfazed by the whole experience. Tony couldn't find the words to express his feelings of anger, shock and relief. But he was relishing the comforting sound of Peter's ramblings. He immediately stepped out of his suit and ordered Jarvis to open Peter's suit. Don't you ever scare me like that again. You hear me? Tony scolded as he wrapped his arms around Peter. God, I don't know what I would do if I lost you, kid. Tony suddenly felt the panic attack from before coming back, as the flashes of Peter turning to dust on Titan flooded his vision. Tony dropped to the ground, once again finding it hard to breathe. Peter's excitement seemed to immediately turn to guilt, as he appeared to be trying his best to calm Tony down. I'm sorry, Mr. Stark. I just really wanted to help you and Nat. I wanted to protect you guys, and I didn't mean to make you sad, and... I'm okay, Mr. Stark. I'm here, Peter said as he wrapped his arms around Tony. Tony held on to Peter for dear life. And the two stayed in an embrace until Tony calmed down again. You did a good job, kid. It was a brave thing you did out there. But please, don't ever fly into space again. I don't think my old heart could take it. Tony then noticed the other Avengers making their way towards him and Peter. Natasha arrived first and immediately ran over to embrace Peter. Wow, you really are Tony's kid, aren't you? Steve cleared his throat awkwardly. Um, as much as I hate to interrupt, there's still a lot of cleaning up that we need to do, Steve said apologetically. Okay, clean up first, then shawarma after. I'm starving, Tony replied. Although none of the Avengers had spoken since the during the shawarma gathering the first time around, it had nevertheless become a crucial bonding moment between the heroes that had solidified their camaraderie. What is shawarma? Peter asked innocently. The best thing you will ever eat, Tony replied. Okay, that might be stretching it a bit, but there are great memories associated with shawarma. I guess death has made me sentimental. You're not going to tell Uncle Ben and Aunt May, are you? Peter replied nervously. I think it's probably best for everyone if we keep this quiet for now, Tony replied as he thought about the shouting match that had occurred the first time around when May had found out about Spider-Man. The Avengers were suddenly blinded by flashing lights of cameras. A swarm of paparazzi circled the group. Mr. Stark, is this your illegitimate, illegitimate son? He is the one responsible for saving Tennessee from the nuke, right? So much for keeping this quiet, Tony muttered to himself. As Tony and the rest of the Avengers tried their best to make it through the horde of paparazzi, one of the paparazzi made the mistake of grabbing Peter. Tony's protective instincts immediately took over as he gently grabbed Peter's arm and pushed hip Peter behind him. Don't you ever touch my son again, Tony growled menacingly, swiftly punching the man in the face. Should, should I just call him my son in front of the media? I'll sue you! That's assault right there! The man screamed angrily as he clutched his face, appearing to be in pain. Yeah, yeah, call my lawyer, Assad. Tony re replied dismissively, that's what you get for touching Peter. Mr. Stark, why, why did you hide your son from us all these years? What, another reporter came a little too close for comfort. We need to get out of here, P Tony muttered. All right, you insolent humans, listen up. If you don't get out of our way within five seconds, I will stab you all. Loki threatened, tossing his knife up into the air. Brother, you cannot threaten to stab humans. Thor scolded. Regardless, the Loki's threat seemed to work, as the reporters immediately ran off. After the Avengers had finally escaped from the reporters, or more accurately, the reporters escaped from Loki, Tony went a walked a bit behind the three, uh, the rest of the group, along with Natasha and Loki. What are we 
why are we handing over the scepter to a known terrorist organization? You do realize the whole reason we came here with my annoying brother in the first place was to take the scepter and tesseract back to Asgard, right? Loki said to Natasha and Tony. We need Hydra to get their hands on it so Wanda and Pietro can get their powers. Also, we can't risk changing the course of events any more than we already have. Natasha replied, Yeah, and no offence, Reindeer Games, but from what I've heard, Asgard seems to be the most destructible, indestructible city ever, said Tony. Anyway, guys, it's shawarma time, Tony announced to the group. Don't let Thor hear you talking about Asgard like that again. He'd probably hit you with that awful hammer of his just to defend his birthplace's honour. Luckily for you, I'm not Asgardian, so I don't happen to care all that much. Seeing as you don't need the Tesseract, I'm assuming Thor and I will be taking it back to Asgard? Loki asked as the group began walking towards the restaurant. Didn't we just establish that Asgard is super prone to destruction? No, I'm keeping it in the tower. Only I'll be able to access it. Tony replied, who put you in charge of holding on to such an important artifact? Loki asked incredulously. I did, obviously. In case you forgot, I saved the entire world when I snapped Thanos' army out of existence. It only makes sense that I help keep the Tesseract safe. Tony replied pompously. After some more bickering between Tony and Loki, Loki finally relented. Even though Loki most likely hated losing an argument to Tony, he surprised Tony as he was able to put his pride aside and do what was best for the universe. Hey, maybe Reindeer Games is capable of growth. Nah, doing one thing doesn't automatically mean he's a stand-up citizen. The shawarma place in Rose Hill, Tennessee, served overcooked meat that was far too dry to chew on. Upon taking his first bite, Peter immediately spat out the flavourless piece of meat. Mr. Stark, that's disgusting! I thought you said this would be the best thing I would ever eat. Oh, come on, kid. How bad can it be? Tony asked before taking a bite out of the dry meat himself. Oh, damn, you're right. That's not good at all. Wow, the insolent metal man has bad taste. That's shocking. Loki chimed in sarcastically. Whatever, you greasy head prick. At least we're bonding as a team, Tony replied, glowering at the god of mischief. Mr. Loki, are the stories I've read about you true? Are you really a shapeshifter? You're one of the coolest people I've read about. Peter exclaimed as he bounced up and down. Loki smirked and turned into a snake slithery before slithering up onto Tony's leg. Oh, hell no. Awesome! Tony exclaimed, Mr. Stark, isn't Loki the coolest superhero ever? Hero? This greasy head twit nearly led the alien invasion last time. Reindeer games, get off. This little shit thinks he can walk all over me. I don't think so. Peter giggled as, Mr. L as Loki begrudgingly applied. Don't worry, Mr. Stark. You don't have to be jealous. You're still my favourite. But Mr. Loki is still really cool. Although exhausted and hungry, Tony noted that the Avengers still managed to have a great time, with Peter filling the gaps of silence with his never-ending questions. By the time they were ready to leave, it seemed as though every Avenger had fallen in love with Peter. Peter's innocence and pure heart had even appeared to have won over Loki, who swore to kill anyone who so much as bad-mouthed Peter in front of him. A young boy around Peter's age sobbed as he knelt in front of the bodies of his mother and younger sister. Tony immediately noticed and alerted the rest of the Avengers and Peter, who was far too exhausted to notice the boy in the corner. Tony glanced over at the boy again, before doing a double take. No, it can't be. Harley? End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that, because that's a mixed bag of a chapter, isn't it? Whew. Mostly light-hearted, a lot of good banter between Tony and Loki. They're either, they're either best friends or arch rivals. They're like twins who don't get along. It's a, it's quite something. <laughs> but that horrible cliffhanger with Harley. Ooh, we're going to see the fallout of that next chapter. Anyway, remember to like, comment and subscribe. Yada, yada, yada. You guys know the drill. Love you all. Bye.